Hello and welcome back to Triclaw Gaming with me Fletcher and we are yet again back on Jurassic World Evolution but with a slightly different video this time around. I'm joined by a fellow builder. Say hello Zyfy. Hello, I am Zyfy from the channel um, Zyfy Gaming. I also do other Jurassic World Evolution games and Planet Zoo and other games such as Rocket League and Minecraft. So yeah, I'm happy to be here and our first proper collab as well. Yeah, we're going to, uh, we're, we've set each other a bit of a challenge, but we'll discuss more of that in a minute. Um, obviously, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new here. So, today's challenge is a uh, try to build the best sand po sandbox park you can make within an hour and 30 minutes, if I remember correctly. Well, uh, an yeah, hour, an hour or so. We'll keep, we'll keep it to an hour or so, because we might end up going over, depending on, on what happens. Yeah, and um, you can see from the map, it's the Kanye Research Facility, and it was actually Fletcher who decided to choose this, so go ahead and introduce your thought process behind this. I actually really like uh, the Takanyo Research Facility map, uh, albeit, yes, it's small, which most people seem to hate, but unlike Isla Penna, which is also small, so you have the challenge of building in a confined space, Penna is um, worse because of all the annoying gradients and the annoying sort of rigid ridge lines and such whereas um the Ticania research facility it's just wide and it's flat so it's small but it's easy to build in mm -hmm. i definitely agree but when i was building the when the woo campaign uh it was such a pain to build on <laughs> but anyways hopefully today we'll see our uh sandbox limits within an hour because normally like i would spend five days on a sandbox park trying to make it the best it can be <laughs> That this will truly exceed our limits. Yeah, Anyways, we shall get into it. Well, before we do get into it, I think it's important to clarify that we do have a couple of rules. Um, we've allowed each other yeah. to um, some time before we actually start building to uh, clear the trees, to flatten some plateaus, and to also construct um, a dinosaur production facility off map so that um, we're not wasting time in that hour doing all the boring stuff that people don't actually want to see in a JWE video. Um, so as you can see, I've, I've already flattened, I've got a few plateaus here, and uh, I'll cut in some footage of Zyfy's plateau if he just wants to uh, show us around that he's already got his plateaus and everything sorted out there. Um, I'll cut in some footage on my video, just revealing that we've both basically got the same start, so then it's relatively fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes, so same here. Um, I decided to put mine within in the border, so that way, after I'm finished with incubating the dinosaurs, I can convert this area into an abandoned research facility for something. Well, that's actually my plan, but we'll see. So you're thinking quite far ahead. I've um, I've got absolutely no plan whatsoever. Um, but while we are building this park, we are going to have a couple of interesting. Um, conversational topics to discuss while we're building just to give uh, us something to talk about um, so mm. let's it's it's 1306 my time so yep, and it's 10 six here okay so uh, the hour will start now we can get building now and um, I will introduce okay. the first topic to discuss as we start thinking about what we're doing with our parks and that first topic mm -hmm. is our most favorite dinosaur in JWE, starting with the vanilla dinosaurs. Well, vanilla, huh? You can go. You go ahead. You can go. You can go first, Fletcher. Um. So I think my favorite is probably Hoangosaurus. Um. <laughs> my that little that little stegosaur shows up pretty much in every one of my parks. Um. It's just, it's got really nice skins, and it's really easy to look after, and yeah, I, I, it's just a really nice dinosaur. Yeah, and well, my favorite vanilla Jurassic World Evolution dinosaur is the Giganontosaurus, and yes, I know it's a pain to keep in, in challenge mode or even campaign, but just the like the rainforest pattern um it's so beautiful like it's blue first of all it's blue which makes me fall in love with it so yeah, that's honestly a win if it has a blue skin it's a win <laughs> so just the giganontosaurus is my favorite 
I was never very fond mm. of Giganotosaurus, to be honest. I just, I, especially the way it's presented in this game, because it's just kind of a, another T Rex, just with funky looking skins. Admittedly, the skins are really nice, I will give it that. Yeah. Uh, I would say my second favorite skin of the Giganotosaurus is the basic, but yeah. I think for the Hawaii, I, the Hawango for me, it's the um, the arid and the steppe, the orange and the red. They're just so, they're really really nice. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I agree as well. Like, person, like one time I did incubate a Hawangosaurus, and it's a, it's cute, and this like yeah, the orange skin, the orange and black made me made it second actually, or second or third on my top favorite species, and. Yeah, I think next is modded dinosaurs, right? Uh, yes, modded um, dinosaurs. But before we get into the yeah. next topic of conversation, let's uh, let's spend a little bit of time just uh, sort of describing for viewers what we're doing here. Um, I oh, yeah. am making a well, focusing on the entrance at the present time, which I've got. I'm going to have located above the rest of the park, so that uh, when you're entering the park, you get a, a really nice view of the uh, the rest of the, the park sort of facilities and the other dinosaurs. And for me, well, I have this plan I drew up. Um, so as you can see, uh, I do have a quite a big entrance and a few exhibits beside it. So that's just my overall plan and that's what I'm doing right now. Well, I love how you're planned and I have absolutely no plan at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, like I like to come prepared. It helps me, it gives me a clear mind for everything, so that's just something beneficial. Yep, and uh, coming from JW, uh, from Triclaw Gaming actually, um, is uh, my my review video for Jurassic World Evolution, so um, stay tuned. Yeah, go ahead. I think that's going to, um, to make some fanboys cry, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I've not been nice. I've not been kind. Uh oh, <laughs> just stay like, it, like yeah. Go check out um Triclos or Fletcher's channel or Triclos channel. They have really good content. The link to the channel in the description below. Yes, and I will obviously link to uh, Zyfy's channel in the uh, the description below. Um, yeah, and. Also, you may have noticed from the path mod I'm using, I'm not using the modern path. I'm using actually a path made by Fletcher here. I'll leave a link to that mod in the description below if you want to install it for yourself. It's a pretty good path mod, and the blue is the blue. <laughs> uh. are, you, are you using all of them, or just the... Um, I think the EvoSphere herself is just using the... Um, the 1993 pass? Oh, no, I'm using all of them because it's just so gorgeous. Alright, let's supply the toy shop. Alright, and if I quickly look at my plan again, which I will be occasionally doing. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, we'll start on the next. We'll start on the first exhibit. So here. I literally just spent the first six minutes of this video making a staircase. Hmm. This actually sounds interesting, and uh, honestly, Fletcher, I can't wait to see what you've come up with because, well, we're not screen sharing on Discord, we're just building a way and talking here, so I'm excited to see what you came up with. By the way, if yeah, anyone good, good. Uh, is unclear how to do some of the uh, architecture that we're both going to be using in the parks, things like circles and octagons, um, I think both me and Ian Zyfy would suggest watching Evo Square's videos where she teaches you how to use the path yep. art tool correctly. Yeah, uh, we'll leave. I guess I'll leave a link in my in the description below and maybe pin a comment just because some people don't check the description at all. Yeah, it's a good idea actually. Uh, we'll, we'll give Evo some love as well. Yes, go go subscribe to her. You know, a good YouTuber as well. Definitely, she uh, Evo definitely deserves a lot more subscribers. Yes, yeah. maybe a million one day. Mm, a million? Get her to a million? <laughs> <sighs> uh, right, I suppose I should probably put in some guest structures. Um, so, what is our most um, 
Uh, it was modded dinosaurs next, wasn't it, for our, our most liked? So mine is actually the, a bit of a spoiler alert, it's the Seismosaurus. Um, I will have a top 10 video, but yes, the Seismosaurus is my favorite. Um, I don't think I have it in my list, but the blue, the Tundra skin, which has the, which is the blue, <laughs> It's just gorgeous, and LA, I'm pretty sure it was made by LA Studios, and the blue skin and the model, ah, beautiful. I don't care what if people say that it's a subspecies of Diplos, it's blue, and I love it. Uh, yeah, I have to agree. That blue tundra skin that makes it look like it's bubblegum ice cream is, um, is absolutely amazing. I've already done my top 10 vid, so everyone who's seen it will know that I actually put the Seismo as my number one. So I'll go for, for my number two, which actually was um, Leviathan and uh, Ario's other dinosaur, which was Concavenator. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's interesting oh, that cool. neither are... Like, Con Leviathan and um, Ario, in their, just their short time, they've already, like... I think... Some months ago, we would have probably gone with a lot of jagged fang designs, um, but not anymore. <laughs> jagged, jagged fang has been uh, usurped as the king of of um, JWE modding. I think. Yeah. I think one of the problems I yeah. I had with um, jagged fang was that they just liked the color brown too much. All of their dinosaurs were just brown. And it's not. I personally it's, like the brown. It's it it can but, sometimes be, a, you know, nice. But then, if every single skin is exactly the same sort of brown, it then just gets very dull and boring. Mm -hmm. And it makes your parks look dull and boring because all the dinosaurs end up with exactly the same, um, colorations and such. Yeah, true. Well, like the concavenator, that was their mistake. It was too brown. That was a mistake with the concavenator. Definitely. Um, in my opinion. Even though I kind of like using both, like I kind of like having the um, the jagged fang one as like a European or American style, and then have leviathans as like a different sp subspecies. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm having to. I'm fighting with the path tool here currently in order to try to fill the gaps in. Yeah, I'm already incubating my first dinosaur. <laughs> oh blimey, I am way behind then. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, okay, so what's logical for Dimetries? Is there a rainforest skin? Yes, there is. I'm incubating that immediately. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Okay, good. I did place it in the right area, and then there's a viewing gallery there. Alright, I think I'll have that much. Um, hmm. And Tundra. And we'll release this. Oh, yeah, this Dimetrodon mod, it's by uh, Digital Duck. It's the new species version in the new species pack. So, oh, I think it is worth okay. letting our viewers know that we are using um, Ultimate Mixterius. So, that is how we're oh, able yes. to have both Jurassic World and Jurassic Park era buildings in mm -hmm. one park. Yes, and it's quite useful actually for us park builders because I'm confused why Frontier didn't give it to us as soon as they released um, Return to Jurassic Park. Uh, it is certainly an oddity that they, they didn't sort of come up with something like that straight away. Uh, I do agree with you there. Mm. And honestly, I think it would be it would have been more fun for me, like if they did do that as well. I mean, the game itself is fun with the mods, but it would have been more fun with other stuff as well. Oh yeah, uh, I fully agree with you there. In fact, I th I think that's I think it's one of the problems I threw at the game um, in my review, which is going to come a sort of soon-ish. Um, mm -hmm. Exciting. So, um, we've discussed what our most favourite uh, dinosaurs are, but we have not discussed what our least favourite are. 
Oh yeah. And well, I guess we'll take turns so you go first again. So it has changed actually. When when the game first came out, the dinosaur I least used was the Velociraptor. Mm. Um, really? And that was primarily because of how terrible the skins were. Those of us who pre DLC, of course, the the Velociraptor skins were awful. There were no, there was no color to them at all. Um, and it really the Velociraptor was only saved by the Return to Jurassic Park DLC. Um, that made the mod actually yeah, worth worthwhile having. Um, so yeah, it was. It used to be Velociraptor, and then I think it's changed now to to probably the only other one I've used the least length of time, which is by far the Majungasaurus. Oh really? I Majungasaurus so... I have barely used in any bug ever. Um, I have replaced it with Eustriptus spondylus. Um, in, which is a mod um, replacement, uh, not new species, just a replacement. And I, um, I don't think I'll, I'll ever be, like, I'm, I won't be bothered if that comes out as a new species because um, I use the Majungasaurus so little that I don't really want it back. <laughs> and for me, I guess it has to be the Myasaur. Um, I think if we if we quickly go to the in, in incubation, if you can quickly see, um, the Myasaurus is straight up ugly. <laughs> I don't have a sadly I don't have a mod that replaces Myasaurus. If I can find it, there it is. Yeah, see that ugly beast. And I think there is a mod that makes it better, but it's just it's just ugly in, in itself. Um, I don't know. I do not know what Frontier was thinking. I don't know why they made into the game. It's ugly, and that's all I'm gonna say. It's ugly. The skins itself, I've never personally used it because it's ugly. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's ugly a lot of times, but yeah, it's just whew. the skins do not do it well. The it, their face and it's just it's just a no go. As, as much as Myasaur is important as a species because it's like the first dinosaur that had confirmation of of um of eggs so it was like the first dinosaur we knew like laid eggs and it was it was that's that's why it's basically famous um it's just a very boring bland dinosaur there's just nothing mm. interesting about it yeah i agree it is yeah. if, if it is just another hadrosaurid dinosaur and we have so many boring hadrosaurid dinosaurs Mm -hmm. Personally, I like the Edmontosaurus, just because, like, <clears throat> I'm going to say it again for the last time, the blue. <laughs> as long as it has a bit of blue in it, then it's a win, except the Myasaurus. Even if it has blue, it's still ugly. <laughs> so my plan here is to put, like, one more building there, around here, and then have the rest as little scenery, scenic trees, so. Or maybe fill it in the, the, the path, we'll see, we'll see. Oh wait, I forgot. I have the um the viewing gallery of the Mosasaurus. I like it. Ah. I like it. I, I really like it as well. I would like it more if it was a unique building. Mm, um same here. Like it would work really well with herbivore enclosures. Not so much with carnivores, I don't think. You're just you're just kind of putting everyone in convenient biting range. As uh, um, oh. Ian Malcolm says. I don't really understand what the point of having him in um, the game was, to be honest. I mean, obviously it's because of hype factor, but apart from that, he doesn't do anything. Yeah. He's just there to make sarcastic quips at you. Yeah, but then again, it's it's Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Let's give him a free pass. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a free pass because it's... Jeff Goldblum. Honestly, I think he is in a movie called Thor Ragnarok, which I've personally watched a hundred times just because Jeff Goldblum's in it. <laughs> All right, let's see. So I am getting started on my first enclosure last, but I've uh, yes. I've realized I need to probably... leave plenty of space oh. for trees. Trees, and I should probably get some rocks into my exhibit. Ah. <sighs> Gotta love a good rock, as yes. uh, 
Evo is fond oh, of saying. But with these types of rocks, I'm gonna go crazy with them. So, <sighs> crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm already going. I'm already spamming rocks right now. <laughs> there we go. Spam and ah, oh, glorious. Ooh, ooh. Okay. So let's test this out. Do we like this? Yes or no? No. Too big. It's too big. Do we like this? Yes, we do. And it looks like a natural border as well. All right. There we go. Right. That. And that. And that. Ah, okay. Zafa, you gotta get back into the Jurassic World evolution controls. I tried doing another Planet Zoo control. Like, he holds Z and you just turn the mouse around, and then you can just. <laughs> Yeah, this is like, oh, it's so useful. Planet okay. Zoo has okay. uh, exactly the same sorts of, con uh, not Planet Zoo, um, well, made sort of Prehistoric Kingdom is what I meant to say. They have the sort of same similar controls, um, which is probably why I'm finding it so hard to build on Planet Zoo, because I'm not used, uh, Prehistoric Kingdom, because I'm not used to the, the system that it uses. Yeah, well, I like it took me like a like a week before I got used to it, and then oh, now it's gonna take me another week to get used to Jurassic World Evolution. I'm, I'm literally working on my first enclosure right now. <laughs> I, oh, I haven't second. Got, I haven't got a single dinosaur in yet, but um, mine is a bit of a large enclosure to be honest, so we should be okay. The guests are so small in here. They're like they're like ants compared to the Planet Zoo guests. There, there is a big problem with this game. Yeah. Nothing yeah. seems to be the right size. Like the um, the viewing gallery building is like, a th it's as tall as a three-story house. I know. And it, it's enormous. Which um, is unnecessary. Operation Genesis, like the basic viewing structure was kind of small because it was designed to be like fitted in anywhere. Mm, yeah. And I think that should lead us into our next topic is, if we want to go into that, our most wanted features in JWE2. Yes, yeah, so this is assuming that uh, there will be a JWE2 because it hasn't been confirmed. Everyone is kind of assuming there is going to be one. I'm not 100% convinced yet. Um, however, assuming there is one, what features would we uh, most like to see in uh, JWE2 and um, mm, so. I think there are lots there are lots of features I would like yeah. to see in JWE2 I think the main one for me would be the opportunity to build our own hybrids or mm. to build our own skins so like have the option to have our own cosmetic skin variations because it wasn't it wouldn't be very difficult to do um, the one of the Formula One games I play, the um, they've they've added this new thing called My Team, which is basically you 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 don't play f you don't drive for any particular Formula One team. You start your own one up, and it gives you the opportunity to like design your car's uh, livery. Um, and it's a very simple system because they have a number of predefined sort of skin patterns, and then you select you select the colour for those particular parts of the pattern and through that oh. very simple system you've got a lot of combinations and a lot of creativity um, Yeah. and something like that would work very easily for JWE and for me what I would see from a sequel is I'm pretty sure it's obvious Control Z <laughs> Control Z yeah Control Z like Honestly, there are so many instances where like I go like that, and instead of having to move to another tool, just whoop, press two buttons, done. Go back to what you were doing. And that, for me, yeah. For path builders like Evolution Square, and maybe me, myself, and other path builders out there, I'm waving my arms, but you can't see it. <laughs> other path builders out there, that would be very useful for them. And and I would have loved to seen it in the um, Return to Jurassic Park because of the lights. Now the lights, if I quickly demonstrate in the quickly far off area, 
let's say you want like you have a path here and then you want to place these little lights and let's say you mess let's say you mess up like that you can't delete you have to delete the path and then the lights which will basically ruin everything so that for me yeah, I, I yeah, additionally pointed that out in my um in my building video that I did a few weeks ago like how terrible the lighting the lights were as deck and it's one of the few decorative items we have as well which makes it even worse mm. like we can't even really use them yeah, now, yeah. it's very sad very unfortunate <gasps> Head. Ooh, okay, we should apply some skulls into the exhibit. Right, so I'm going and with uh, herbivores as per normal. Yeah, and for me, you approach for herbivores. I went for the, the Metrodon for the, my first exhibit because sure they're carnivores, but they're not that big attraction carnivores. I would say I like to put my like T Rex stuff like that at the very back. I'm going with herbivores. Ooh. Um, mostly because this is a relatively large first exhibit, so it kind of makes sense for there to be a sort of quite a few herbivores in this in this one. Goal. So with this like pack I'm using, um, I'll think I'll show my thought process behind this this pack or this um, new scenery pack. I'll leave a link. I have so many links. Um, <laughs> I'll leave a link to the descriptions. They have these skeletons and. Even though this skeleton here is for a Patasaurus, I like to use this Edmontosaurus, this Edmontosaurus skull for a little headpiece, as if it was a giganormous. Gig, I don't know. I'm not. I, I I really don't know. It's just a giant Edmonto, but I like using it as a, as if the Dimetrodons in my exhibit found a way, found life found a way for them to eat it. So, hmm. Oh. Oh. You sounded just like Ian it... Malcolm then. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what, like, how can I approach this Packy, Stiggy, and. What, wait, what is it? Packy, Stiggy, and Dracorex exhibit. Huh. Uh, I'm just putting in some more decoration into my. Uh... My, the only exhibit I have at the moment is like we're 20 minutes in and I haven't got a single dinosaur yet. <laughs> I'm already starting like, I might like, I already have my Dimetrodons. Oh wait, they're close by, they're close by. Ah oh, yes, yes, perfect. Okay, so, alright, let's incubate the Dracorex and Stiggy mo Moloch thingies. I don't uh, know. And, I'm just focusing on the looks of the exhibit, mainly, which is basically, like I would say, uh, decoration, but more on how it would fit the animal. Uh, I have forgotten yes. to put any bushes in this particular park. We need some bushes for vegetation height. Is that straight? Yes, the thing. Let's do that. All right. So, mm -hmm. I would normally put down quite a few of the um, special bush uh, bushes that we have which is uh, which allows you to clip through things but that would take too long so that's a reasonable exhibit I think and we've got quite a lot of room there for quite a lot of dinosaurs so let's um, fly over to my dinosaur production facility and get some dinosaurs going um, and they all need to be ground feeders so we'll start off with some Casmos I think because so I've got a new mod for the gold Casmos um, oh I think I think Hes Hes the new the Hesperosaurus is one of my favorite mods so far um, but the guy who who made the Hesperosaurus has actually removed it from the um, the Nexus it's not available anymore he, but it's it's mm. like he's reworking the whole thing because apparently he hated like the skins and everything and I'm like dude the skins are amazing and um, but that is my new Chasmosaurus the new Chasmosaurus mod um, if Zyfy edits edits this into his video the new Chasmosaurus uh, mod um, takes a sort of prehistoric kingdom sort of um, uh, way so you've got like a really bright frill but a, a relatively bland body but that's okay for a ceratopsian I think Alright, let's see. Do I have any mods for the Dracorex and Packies? Oh, yes, I do. The. Let me go down to the Packies. Um, 
Oh, I wish there it is. So with this one, I'll just start incubating them. Uh, oh, what was it? I think it was just the basic skins. And I don't know why, but when I'm doing like modded vanilla dinosaurs, I just give it the base skin because I like the base skin. So, and personally, I'm scared to try out the um, what should we call it the the variants just because if it ruins it, it's gonna make me very sad. I know the feeling. I I have uninstalled many a dinosaur mod because Ooh. even though the base skin was okay, like the <laughs> other skins were rubbish, and I've just been like, no, not using that. Yeah. And what? for me, like every every single skin has to be good for me, <clears throat> or at least most. Of them. Yeah. And if you look at this Pecky mod, it's actually I forgot to change the icon, but I think it was made by Games Videos for Life. Um, uh, I'll leave. I'll find the mod. I'll find the mod for this. I don't know what mod it is because I don't keep track of my mods. But if Fletcher uh, would like to like edit it, edit this into his clip video, you can see this little like black and white striping at the like this mm, subtle black and white striping at the legs. And then the brown spotted body. Oh, it's glorious. And oh, it's amazing. All right, we'll leave these guys in peace as we set up their home. Let's um, have a third Hesperium. We'll give it a different skin. Uh, we'll give it the Savannah skin. I think the Savannah one is kind of nice. And I think we'll then add, just for a bit of size difference, where are you? One of my most one actually, it's probably my most favorite of the. Yeah, I would go as far as to say it's probably one of my favorite um, dinosaurs in the game. Is the Struthio Ah uh, yes, the good old Struthi. It's the very first dinosaur you get. It's small and has no rating, but it looks really nice. Every single one of its skins are nice. <clears throat> Like personally, I like the rain, like the uh, the blue, the blue, <laughs> the blue, the blue skin. I like that one a lot. Yeah. I have realized that we have so many dinosaurs with blue skins that we could actually do a blue skin park now. Video <laughs> ideas. So I write that down. Write that down. Write that down. If you think about, write it down. Um, if you think about, so we've got the Seismosaurus, we've got the Apatosaurus, um, we have. Um, I think there's a blue con. No, I don't think there is a blue concavenator actually. Yeah, there's none. Sadly, not. But the Mazakaisaurus has a blue skin. There's an Indoraptor mod that adds a sort of the blue stripy skin. Um, <clears throat> yeah. There's there's quite a few blue dinosaurs or like close to blue dinosaurs that we you could use. Yes, I'll be. That'll be my next series after my park building series for JW JWE ends. That'll be the next build, and or a blue skin park only. Um, right, my dinosaurs <laughs> are going in. There is a great flight of dinosaur mass going on here. Um, we have three herbivore species in a single enclosure. Yeah, and when I'm doing the hotels, I don't know why, but I use the um the return to Jurassic Park just because it's so small it's like small and can fit in t tight spaces like here it's definitely the better hotel to make use of yeah but if you're building like a city or a a metropolis like Evo did or I might do one day we I like to use the uh, modern hotel here it just frustrates me Wait. how big some of these Jurassic World era structures are yeah. Like yeah, they're just like you, they. Some of them they just don't need to be as big as they're presented. Mm. And it's it's. I do apologize for that loud squeak. That was uh, my flat uh, housemate Vice bringing me a cup of tea. Thank you. It's all good. Getting deliveries of tea. Something to like a good concentration. I should probably drink some water. 
So, uh, while Zyfy is off drinking water, I am getting prepared to construct the uh, my carnivore enclosure, actually. And I, w I wish I had a mini fridge in my room. <laughs> I wish I had one. Just that way when I'm recording, I can just open, drink, put it back, put it back, and make it cool. Alright. Okay. Uh, I do hate the clipping on Pats for Planet Zoo. Wait, Planet... Bleh? Oh, Jurassic World Evolution. It's just annoying. It is. It is a big annoyance. I agree. Yeah, like... Like, if you just, like... I, I'll probably qu insert a quick replay here. Like, you can see me struggling um, as I drink my water. Uh, you can see me struggling to even get the right path as... Uh, uh, I, I'm just gonna leave that clipping for now. It's such a small clipping that I won't even notice it. <laughs> anyway, so... Alright, so, how does... How does that look from a guest point of view? So, I think... Yeah, I think that's good, yeah. We have the guests walking around, and then if we go to the Dimetrodons... They have their little exhibit. Perfect. Okay, so that's all set up. Next is the this this this. Uh, I am this only just be building my first carnivore enclosure. Oh, mm -hmm. well, I just like. I think we switched our plans because you did the, the herbivore exhibit first. I did the carnivore. Now you're doing your carnivore. Now I'm doing my herbivore. The good old switcheroo. It's the switcheroo. Alright, let's see. I, I tend okay, to always I... start with yeah, like yeah. a carnivore. Ah, uh, herbivore, sorry. Yeah. I, I, I never not have a herbivore to begin with. Yeah. Normally I would start with herbivores, yes, but with the space we have here in Tukanyo research facility, I just thought it was necessary to try and put a carnivore quite early. <sighs> I'm not that bothered about park rating, to be honest. Same here. Uh, I'm right. trying to go for it. <laughs> this is a carnivore, so we need slightly taller fencing for it to make sense. A bit of a desert enclosure. Looking for a bit of a desert biome here for my carnivore. Yep, and huh. go. You know, the aim is, is not to, f like, build the entire park immediately, like, I think the point was that we were going to try and make the best looking park we could in the time. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like, all I'm hearing is like, I need more dinosaurs, I need more dinosaurs. <laughs> that's, that's, that's most of my parks, dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. And, honestly, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try leading this up. I'll go ahead and do that now, actually. Please. And yep. Come on, I hate this. Why can't I put? There we go. Finally, put a path there. Put a path there, and then there. Okay, and then we'll have. Hmm. We'll have circles on the sides. So we'll use this fancy path from the JP era, and it's also modern. I. My entire game is basically mod. There's no more vanilla stuff except some dinosaurs. That the um, majority of it. that one is the one which ha which I did, isn't it, with the sandstone effect yeah. and the um, blood red it's, and so like, silver um, T Rex symbols in. Yeah, I think it's like the the one that looks like from the model. That one, I like that one a lot. So right, it good. should be noted that that's actually not so. For that particular mod, I didn't just um, take the pre-existing path and change the color. It's an entirely new texture, um, ba base texture. It's a, a sandstone base texture. Um, the height mapping and everything is taken from the the basic path as it is. And then I had to go and repaint over all of those um, little symbols to make them blood red and silver. Um, which took a very long time, <laughs> but it lo it looks really it nice. Looks, I think. Yeah, I know. Like I'm, it's beautiful. That's why I'm using it right now. Uh -huh. And 
uh, as a mod maker myself, um, I will be using most of my mods. I'll be using a mod of mine here. Uh, self promotion. <clears throat> uh, so self promotion there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Then. Pr promote the... yourself all you like. I'll, I'll keep it in. <laughs> so yeah, the um, Astralovinator. I've recently reworked it. Um, where is it? The Astralovinator, and honestly, I like it better than my old, old version, just because um, the skin. Uh, Right, I, I like this. I like my skinning. The way I have improved in skinning ever since um, when I first actually made my first new species, uh, which is the Astralovenator, which is that one. I'm just trying to rework most of my mods, and ah, uh, it's a lengthy process. I think that's the sign of a good mod maker, though, is when they like go back and rework things that they didn't like about the mod the first time around and constantly update it. Um, I think too many people make like a mod and then they know it's got mistakes, but then they don't ever try to fix them. Yeah, and um, I think there is one mod. I won't call out names, but they do have a lot of mods. But the quality of the mods, mm, not my favorite. Like, sure, I have some of them installed, but only like. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think I know the. the I think I know the individual you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but. Ah, so just like how they went for quantity over quality isn't really my style. I like quality over quantity. Yeah, so I, I just... would I would take a... Um, I think that's the biggest um, issue actually with JWE1. And that segues on to what our question of the biggest problem with Jurassic World Evolution mm -hmm. 1. Is that... Yeah. And I, I have gotten this quite a lot, um, especially when discussing why Jurassic Park Operation Genesis is better. And you will you will inevitably get the fanboy who sits there and shouts at you, well, uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis has um, only 25 species, but Jurassic World Evolution has like tons, so that makes Jurassic World uh, Evolution better. And I'm like, mm. no, no it doesn't. Because the dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 1 don't feel different. Because there's so there's so many copy-paste animations and there's so many bland skins that they kind of all end up merging into one another. Um, in fact, I did a test of this for my to come review video on JWE1. And I discovered the, the Hoangosaurus Gigantospinosaurus and Chunkingosaurus all have exactly the same animation rigs. And it's like, I would rather have 25 dinosaurs with their own unique animations that feel like unique species than um, like 45 odd dinosaurs, half of which are copy pasted. Yeah, and. Honestly, they were, I think for um, the carnivore pack and herbivore pack, they already went for new animations, like those ones I liked, and those are the dinosaurs I mainly use. But, like, yeah, the animation is my problem as well, but if they applied it to base game, I think I would have stayed in Planet, I would have stayed in Jurassic World Evolution than Planet Zoo. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what carnivore to put in my little carnivore pack again. I'm tempted to put Dimetrodon on myself. Um... Oh shoot! I forgot my packies. They are they're starving. Um, I was like, huh. I wonder what happened to my packies. <laughs> I'm going. I am going totally off my plan. That I'm not even looking at it. Ah, <laughs> oh. uh, there we go. Would have one giant circle. Rapa uh, I do like the Rapator that you did. Um. Oh, yeah. Oceana pack. We just, are reworking it. It just needs that, because there was that weird white line around the neck and the tail that like made it look like it was a plastic model that had been put together badly. And I was like, eh. I've never seen that on any other... Like, I asked Dino Army about it, and he, even he wasn't sure how you exactly managed to do that. <laughs> so... <laughs> so I, might just ask, I might ask Tiny, the one that made the Rapator skin, so... I actually think we'll go for some Allosaurus um, because I want to show off one of the mods I installed the other day. 
Yep. And so, I'll edit that in, like, once you release that Allosaurus. Yep, so I, this, I um, I'm going for a pattern D as well. This particular mod, um, adds some okay. brand new cosmetic skins, and this is something oh. that's, um, coming a lot of, um, it's, it's coming more often, uh, in the modding scene. People making new, brand new cosmetics rather than replaces or new species. Um... And this particular like one that. adds some new cosmetics that make the Allosaurus into the big owl uh, from Walking with Dinosaurs. So you've got this really nice Walking with Dinosaurs model with the, the red crests and patterning. Uh, and it's got some skin variations as well. Ooh, that arid one is really nice. Um, mm, and, nice. And because I've got the Walking with Dinosaurs big owl sound effects on as well, it even gives it the proper... Walking with dinosaur sounds, so um, that's glorious. And Big Al will be my first carnivore. He'll, he can go, yeah, he can go in there. Um, do we actually I have? Have... I have no people. In... It... Oh no, I do have some people in my park, but they're all at the top. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's coincidence because my first carnivore is the Walking with Dinosaurs by Metrodon. <laughs> oh nice. Well, so... uh, Walking with Monsters by Metrodon, isn't it? Uh, same thing, same thing, <laughs> same difference. Yeah, and well, almost. It's like it's the Walking With series, so that's pretty funny. And... Stick a viewing right, tower listen. here, and it's not particularly. Hey, I think that's good. We have our little, we have this little Zyfy logo. Here. We have our little my channel's name, Zyfy, and to these. Is it this big? Oh no, that's way too big. Oh, I too just big, I need big. to put in uh, I need to put in one of my little typical markers, don't I? That I I add to every one of my parks. I usually have like a little font. I've kind of like almost invented my own font, <laughs> which I keep trying. I keep putting in like every every park I do, but um, I don't actually have anywhere to put it in this one, not without wasting a lot of space. So I think we won't do it with this one. Um, yeah, like in my little part here, I have like this guest area and this negative space by next behind the guest buildings, and I think I just I put my logo there. Actually, uh, at least... oh, there is a place for it. I have I have discovered that there is a place. Mm. I want, I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see your park because like we're both different style builders. I'm more of the dinosaur side. You're more of the uh, decorative side, if I'm not mistaken. Um. And I think just I just see how we... I, t I tend to spend a great deal of time on my parks. I think um, my sauna biome park, which I I made for Evo Square's um, Battle of the Builders con contest, and I had to I had to build a completely new park, um, which is good actually because then Pharaoh's Valley won the competition. Um, nice. But yeah, the the, the, sa the sauna biome park took. Um, I think 40 hours to complete. 40 hours. I do not have that patience. <laughs> Maybe except in Planet Zoo where... Oh. But uh, 40 hours just... Yeah. But then that's okay. that's nothing considering like Evo made um, her prehistoric kingdom park, her first proper prehistoric kingdom park and it, it came out um... at 80 hours. Yeah. Um, it's honestly so, like every time I hear like people say, "Oh, I worked like a hundred hours on this" or something like that, I'm always thinking, "How do you have the time?" <laughs> wow. Like some people bizarre. Some people like just make the time, don't they? But um, it you you do wonder sometimes on on particularly people who like play um GTA and stuff like that. Um, it's like they've got hundreds of thousands of hours, and it's you do kind of sit there wondering, how do you not have anything else you need to do in your life? Oh, I forgot. I have this like boab tree that replaces the um the tree of life. How do you replace the tree of life? The tree of life is a great tree. Yeah, but the boab trees are, is one of my favorite types of trees. <laughs> I suppose it is a good tree. Though. Yes. I, I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Right, let's just stick in. Uh, there we go. And for this, we'll have a African 
we'll have a river flowing, it's flowing through, and then we'll use the old met the blue metal part here, because then that will be able to recognize the sun. Right, and then we'll have the. Whew. All right, let's have that tree. That tree. I'm never replacing tree two. Tree two is one of my favorite types of trees in the base game. Personally, just because it looks, I don't know. It's, it's just reminds me of a eucalyptus tree here in the sh in down under, and I just like it. All right. Whew. Okay, 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 okay. So. So we are almost, we're almost honestly at the one hour mark, but I think it's I think it's worth carrying on for a, maybe another hour, because um, I think another hour. I think both of us are still very much at the beginning of. <laughs> yeah. and we'll see if we can go in another hour. No, I think Hopefully it, we I think can. we can easily do another hour or so. Um, yeah, it really depends, though. So let's. All right, I think. Let's um, come up with another thing to ask, and I've got one for you, Zyfo. What do you think is um, sort of the be like the best dinosaur skin out of all oh. of the skins that you have seen? Oh. The very best mm -hmm. one, and it can be mod or not mod. Oh, oh that is tough. Oh, oh, that is really tough. Hmm. Ah, oh, I gotta think about this for a while. Ooh, big brain sci-fi, are you in there? Yes, you are. All right. So I think it's has to be. Let me go quickly check. Let me quickly check my genome library. I I think it has to be the here it is. Yeah, JFD. Their um the way they do this little spotting and I have it right here in my little icon and the <clears throat> blue <laughs> the blue the way it's just like the black matches the blue a lot and I would personally say that's what's good in the skin the um the natural coloring and how it matches how it would match in an exhibit with other animals so yeah it's just an amazing and beautiful skin. So that's mine. Um, and now a question for you, Fletcher. Uh, this one's going a bit more into the YouTube side, if you don't mind. Um, why did you decide to start YouTube? Like, why? How? What came up with this Triclaw Gaming? It's a good channel, and what's the thought process? So, at the present time, me and uh, I'm living with my significant other and my um, uh, our mate Vice. Um, who came in and gave me a cup of tea a minute ago, and we 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 moved in during the middle of the um, coronavirus pandemic, and the <coughs> the problem is we we moved to our new place uh, in a little town called Leighton Buzzard. Um, and it's impossible. It's impossible to say that you live in a town called Leighton Buzzard and not sound posh. Um, Leighton Buzzard. Um, but no. So we moved, and it's it was just re it's been impossible to get a job. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a fully trained teacher, and I cannot find a job. Um, I have all the qualifications under the sun, and I've got university, two university degrees, and I've got everything else. And I have got work experience, but um, just no one wants to give me a job because they mm. they they tell me I'm underqualified, uh, or over experienced, or too qualified. Um, and it's really it's really difficult to get a job at the moment, and that can be quite. I'm sure there are people watching who. Um, have been stuck in exactly the same situation. It can be very disheartening. Um, and you end up sort of spending your days not doing anything. And that can be, you know, that can lead to all manner of, of problems. Um, it's very easy to get quite depressed and stuff. So the idea of the, the YouTube channel was to really get, give us something to do to sort of focus our minds on, but at the same time, 
I've always wanted to have a YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. Me and my uni buddy Ryan actually came up with the idea for one at university. We were going to call it Don't Worry, We're Saying What You're Thinking. And it would just be basically us like talking about all the sort of iffy opinions and iffy views and iffy sort of things that people a lot of people think but they don't ever say because you know maybe it's it's socially unacceptable or or stuff like that um and we we would just go through it and be like don't worry we're saying what you're thinking um <laughs> and yeah we, we just had that random idea for that i'm at, i'm i'm actually kind of glad we didn't do that because i think we'd get in quite a bit of trouble um but yeah, that that that's the that's the primary for. Oh god, I love that blue path and how it shines. I love how I got that metal path to shine in the sun. <laughs> it's so glorious. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, what about you, Zyfy? Why did you start YouTube? YouTube. Ah, uh, here, yes, this one was um, actually something quite similar, but not too similar. So, um, unlike you, I do live with my like with my family and. Um, and personally, like, the reason I started the YouTube channel was I've been inf influenced by other content creators, such as, um, uh, I can't really list all of them because I watched a lot, but others such as... I, I um, actually, sorry, it's like, it's like, it's like, um, Evo has been a big, like, um, a big push to me to actually start the whole YouTube thing, I don't mm. think. I think it was watching her videos showed me just like how many people were interested in just watching art building gameplay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So for me, like other in YouTubers that some here may know, such as Dante DM, I don't know if some of my viewers like remember them, Stampy Cat, those were my main inspirations for starting my channel, especially since if you will go back into my channel and see most of them are Minecraft, that's why. I just wanted to know how it felt to be, you know, and I just wanted to know how it, you know, how they would feel. Like, I wanted to know why was it enjoyable for them? What joy did they find in it? And, well, here I am, a YouTuber, and it's fun recording, stuff like that. And, and personally, it's just a hobby for myself, because I like games a lot. I do play a lot of games, and my original plan for this channel was to be a drawing channel. Um, I used to draw a lot as a kid, and it was to be a how to draw um, channel. But as I grew older, my interests 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 changed, and personally, I'm going into more gaming. So that's pretty much it, I would say. Yeah. I used to draw a lot as a kid as well. And um, sci-fi, if you want, I'll actually send you some some of my own stuff I've drawn so you can sort of edit this in um, over footage sure. if you like. Um, I used to do a lot of drawing uh, myself and I actually wanted to go and do art as um, as one of my advanced subjects. Um, what In what in Britain is called A-levels um, which for American viewers is, is what you do after basic education um, sort of 16 to 18 um, and I wanted to do art, but um, my a family member of the time, and we won't go into why he's no longer a family member, um, basically said, oh, there's no money in it, you won't earn any money from art, and blah, 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 um, and basically made me do a different subject instead. Um, a subject which I was not particularly good at, and ended up failing as a result. <laughs> And I do wish I had kept up with my art. Um, I think I've probably lost most of my art skills actually because I haven't, I haven't done it in so long. Um, but I might like edit a few bits of my arts, like uh, in in here as well. Maybe uh, edit them in now, so you can see that I've kind of stopped now. Um, just as I go into gaming more. But maybe as a separate channel, um, I don't know if you guys want to see it. As a separate channel, I'll have a art channel, you know? If you want to see that, just let me know if you want to see that. Oh, but yeah, that was why we I started YouTube in this life, I guess. My claw was created for Fletcher here. Yeah, so um, actually, let's just quickly talk. I'm going to quickly take a moment to segue into talking about the park as it currently stands. So we have... Uh, we have our entrance over here, we have our 
herbivore enclosure here with the um, with our chasmosaurs. They have like a nice little archway structure here. Um, we have some Struthiomimus in here somewhere, but I've made them green, so I can't see them. There they are, Struthiomimus, and the uh, Hesperosaurus as a Stegosaur. Um, we got some nice uh, different tree combinations here to to add some interest, and we have a little desert enclosure for our big Al Al uh, Allosaurus, and uh, we're currently working. This is sort of what I do. I kind of found this like weird font online. I've been making different. Uh, letters out of it for all of my parks. Um, I'll sort of, I'll clip in some footage of my other parks with other similar lettering going on. I just like having like a giant letter somewhere just to indicate um, the park. But the fact that it's out of the my blue metallic path, so it's got a nice shine to it, so it shines in the sun. I just really like that. <laughs> I'll have to do that more often. Um, um, yeah, cool. But Zyphi, uh, another question for you, um, also about um, YouTube, sort of. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think is the most difficult bit about YouTubing? Yes, uh, well, I don't know if it's the same for you, but for me, I would say is there's two things. A, the time to record, and B, the editing bit. Now, personally, like for my upcoming video, the Planet Zoo one, it's just gonna be a voiceover and music, so I'm not gonna edit that much. But for videos like this one, um, it was like I'm gonna go like it was a hard time to find a good time to record where both of us are free, both of us could record and and the editing. This will take a lot of editing since this is one big video. So it's just that basically the editing and um, time. Just especially since I'm busy with other things in life, so those bits will conflict in my YouTube. But honestly, yeah, just I'm going back a lot, the time and editing. But how about you? Which one would you say is the hardest part? I think um, I think one of the hardest bits is definitely editing. I agree with you. Um, in fact, one of our other Tricore gamers, Vice, um, uses has a, uses um, a paid for video editing software. So I'm I'm still stuck using free ones at the moment. Mostly because I just don't want the expense of, of paying for um, an expensive video editing software right now. Um, when we're, we're not exactly earning money, as so to speak. And um, definitely editing is, is very difficult. Um, it takes a lot of time. Um, I think the other thing that is tricky is actually kind of getting started. I know that before I started doing YouTube videos, like one of the things I most like if any, any anyone said to me, "Well, why don't you do it?" Um I I my usual excuse would be, "Well, I just don't think I have anything worth saying. I just don't think people would be worth like would be interested in listening to me." And you kind of have to get it's a, it's definitely a confidence thing. You have to feel like you you have the confidence to say stuff that people would want to listen to and do stuff that people would want to watch um, and I think it's like I think the problem is that we see so many creators like PewDiePie and Best in Slot and um, Markiplier they're massive channels and they they certainly have their own style and for us small guys we sort of sit there and think well why is anyone going to watch us and not go and watch them um <coughs> But I think it's also worth remembering that there are currently nearly 8 billion people on the planet. And that means there's going to be a huge range of people um, who might not want to listen to PewDiePie shout excessively at stuff or um, Markiplier be scared out of his wits by Bonnie or Freddy. Um, and some people might just want to sit for an hour and watch someone chilled playing um, a park builder, just uh, you know, constructing a park. Um, so yeah, I, th I think that's the most difficult bit. You have to get out of that sort of feeling that no one's going to be interested and just kind of do it. Just just do it. Um, and I would say for anyone thinking about starting a YouTube channel, like the only way of knowing how good you're going to be is to just get up and do it. And as long as you try to, I think 
as long as you always try to improve your videos each time you make one. Um, even if it's just in a small way, like your commentary, or trying something out new with the editing, or doing what me and um, me and my significant other did on uh, our video we just posted actually on Triclaw, which is we've uh, we went for a joint commentary, so we were both talking in it. Um, just just experiment and see what works and what gets people's interest. Um, it's kind of I w I would always go as far as to call YouTube a science. Um, you you try something out and if it doesn't work, you try something different. Um, mm. ju but you'll only know these things if you actually just get up and do it. Yeah, and I yeah, I, 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 personally... I suppose that's the same with any, everything, really, isn't it? You'll only know if you get up and actually do it. But and one of my videos actually that. I took it down was because I think it was a my one of my first videos. The reason I took it down was a it wasn't like the the audio quality wasn't that good and b it wasn't very popular. And another video that is still up on my channel it's the Rocket League video that hasn't got much views just because well I don't really don't know why but it's not a big game I would say as such as Jurassic World Evolution or Planet Zoo or Minecraft that are getting a lot of views on my channel. So yeah, just a lot of experimenting with games you have. Do these people like it? If not, then don't do it because that won't get you subscribers or stuff like that. Like that. Yeah, it is actually why me and Significant Other switched from um, City Skylines and uh, Hades to um, Enter the Gungeon and doing more Jurassic World Evolution stuff. Um, yeah. Mostly because there are when it comes to city skylines especially there are some really big youtubers out there who do absolutely amazing city skylines building and it's very difficult to make your stuff stand mm. out um but then i think what i'm actually going to do is have a uh, start a new like instead of focusing on one building game i'm gonna have a sort of series where i look at lots of different building games and um because I've got a lot of building games, whether it's uh, Banished or um, Surviving the Apocalypse or Frostpunk, which I really need to get pro give a proper going over because uh, um, I kind of didn't really give it much of a chance when I had Frostpunk before. Um, mm. So yeah, I've got loads of building, like city building and also park building sort of games. So I'm just going to have that as a ch as a as a series on the channel, you know, let's play some park builders yeah. and city builders. That'll be nice. And yeah, and for me, like I've noticed when I was posting Jurassic World Evolution, it got more views into my mind, most of my Minecraft videos. So I don't know, maybe I might become a Minecraft a Jurassic World Evolution YouTuber. And I'm trying Planet Zoo for my next, and if it gets uh my, as much views as at least Minecraft or. JWE, then I'll keep doing it, but it's just a lot of experimenting. For sure. Uh, I think I'm going to go with some sauropods in this particular enclosure. Um, or a oh. sauropod, maybe a small one. Um, I need a, a sort of light fence that's not particularly it's strong, but not too strong because it's only a sauropod. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see, where does that stick go? There it is. And whew. so you you might be seeing if you're you are watching some little tricks and tip tricks that both me and Zyfy are probably doing. Um, one of the biggest things I would suggest people to do is to try as much as possible to hide your fencing, um, so that you have the you have the illusion of greater space. So you can actually see in this particular, if I switch to map view, you can see this sauropod enclosure is actually smaller than it looks. Um, the fencing at the back is only there disappearing off into the trees to give the illusion that the, the paddock sort of goes into the tree line. And then you use an invisible fence just in front um, to actually create the paddock um. and for like when I'm when I go to per, like when I go to the zoos um I personally don't see the, the end of the fence uh it goes off into like trees and shrubbery and vanishes as is as if you know 
that was not the way. <laughs> so let's just uh, realist, I think an, realist, an, realist. Uh, another trick that anyone can do, especially if they are on console, um, is to, and Evo has said this quite a few times, don't be scared of wasting space. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I know that the, the, this one of the biggest problems with Jurassic World Evolution 1 is the lack of space it gives you to build. But actually, yeah. if you think about it, you're not really supposed to try to fit all 45 species of dinosaur on one island. So try to give yourself limits on what you're going to put on each island. Um, and maybe on Matanceros, only have the dinosaurs on Isla Matanceros sandbox parks, where you know maybe have just small dinosaurs or just the first few species of dinosaurs you unlock in game. Um, maybe have mm. just herbivores on Tucano and just carnivores on Isla Murta. Maybe have just hybrid species on Isla Pena, and that way you're restricting your species countdown, and you then have more space to think about designing the park and putting in stuff like you know plazas and path art and gap fill and just nice looking decorative elements um, and that really helps to make your parks look nicer <laughs> um, too many people kind of like fill the whole park up with just dinosaur enclosures of all various sizes and shapes and it, it just looks really naff <laughs> there's no other way there's no other way i can say that it looks terrible after a while you you will look back and you'll you'll pan the camera back and it will just be a mass of fencing and enclosures mm. and it just looks really awful mm. so yeah mm. don't be scared to waste some space to make the park look nicer. nicer. Yes, and if you look at this like this little area I've built, like, oh boy, how much waste that space wasted. <laughs> like, oh, look at this giant path design. Um, I don't know what I was going for. I'm just freestyling it. But yeah, oof. It's just um, go for what you think is good in your in your eyes. Ignore the rating if you're in sandbox. Exactly. Um. Don't bother messing about with the rating system in in Sandbox. You're not. The point of Sandbox is to not make a five star park. The point of Sandbox is to make a nice looking park that you're happy with. So, yeah. you know, focus on that. I'm actually going to add in the Wind Tonno Titan as oh, my Titan, yeah. Wind Tonno Titan. I really like yeah. the Wind Tonno Titan. Um, Same here. It it looks it looks kind of weird because it, the skins kind of remind me of an old style, old fashioned style dinosaur model that you used to be able to get, um, and the skins would be quite contrasting. But because it's based on the original Camarasaurus rig, it's kind of small, um, yes. so it's kind of a smaller sauropod. So I suppose if you think about the the, the dinosaurs we have, we have Nigeosaurus, which is a tiny sauropod, or right, what or, or what you would classify as a small sauropod. Um, you have yeah. things like um, Diplodocus, which are medium sized, and then you have things like Brachys and Dreadnoughtus and Mementis that are huge. Like the Wintona Titan new species is kind of smaller than Diplodocus, but bigger than Niger, so it fits in an, a nice little like niche there. Um, and yeah, the skins might not be massively decorative, but they're distinctive enough for it to be all right, I think. And mm. I just love the old-fashioned skin designs. In fact, I think I actually had a sauropod which had this like light green and then white underbelly. I think I actually had a model as a kid like that. Interesting. And yeah, honestly, like. With the recent like breakthrough, I think it was rig editing. Um, yeah, rig editing. We can have. Well, rig editing is not for resizing. Sadly, not resizing, but changing like the length of necks, stuff like that, the length of the tails for these species, that can possibly create um, you know, bigger looking sauropods or bigger looking 
carnivores so that's what i'm excited for in the modding community because well i myself in the modding community like rig editing <laughs> it's not an easy task um it took like it's been rig editing was in the modding community was talked about for quite some time like i'm pretty sure before new species were even considered and Oof, it's just been a while, and you just it's been only like a week or a month, a month, since most, since it was announced. So, I'm excited to see more sized dinosaurs. It certainly gives a lot more options for us. I think it's still very difficult to do. I think it's, it's still, I think um, rig editing is still very much the purview of um, really, like, amazing people who who know how mods work like who who probably who are probably modders by hobby that the, then they've probably modded loads of games um yeah and i think there is a modern nexus that has rig edited the stegosaurids um it was made by eco green and that officially is the second uh, mod that has rig editing the first one was carcaro monstrum uh shark hybrid so I'll probably leave a link to that mod in the description below. Uh, whew, a lot of descriptions. But I haven't installed it yet. Um, I might install it in, maybe in the next video, but we'll see. It's just a big breakthrough and the uh, mod creator, Eco Green, he's actually struggled with it. He needed the help of another modder who did rig editing. And oof, just gotta say, they both struggled with it. And these modders are the ones that are really well known, that have made the fence mods, that have made... Mr. Chodon that made these fence mods, he's tried rig editing. And I think he said it took him like a month or maybe more to fully, to get one dinosaur rig edited. So it's just a, it's not an easy task. It's a very, it's a big castle that I personally won't try anytime soon. It is actually really surprising to me how difficult Frontier made this game to mod because um, if you think about like Planet Coaster and Planet Zoo like modding for that seems to be really very easy and people have been modding that for a while like um, Planet Coaster there are so many amazing roller coasters mods that people have made and they just stick them onto the the workshop on Steam, and it, it's 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 no harder than modding like city skylines. But this game, mm. it's been imp it's been next to impossible to get it to do some stuff that modders would probably be able to do on other games like really very easily. Um, mm. And it just strikes me as weird that Frontier would would make that decision. I have a feeling that perhaps the decision was stimulated more by Universal than. Frontier. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that un a lot of the problems we have with JWE are due to Universal and not necessarily Frontier. I think Frontier yeah. probably got the short end of the stick as well um, and had to kind of were limited in, in, in doing what Universal told them. Um, mm -hmm. And as a result we ended up with a game that could have been better very easily yeah, a million times better um but you know let's hope if they are doing a jurassic world evolution 2 let's hope that universal have given them a little bit more free reign to to do what yeah. they they like um and well, okay i should honestly talk about what i'm doing now because i have i've just been pathing away at this so what i'm planning to do is this giant like town square um as you can see it's not much of a square it's like a it's like a diamond it's like a diamond box um what i'm trying to do is just create when you enter as a guest you just have this wide open view of you know mag majest ma majesty and open open welcome so i'm just trying to expand a lot and finally starting on my third exhibit so which will be the these one guys right there and and let's see what's another good question ah here um one question since we both play quite a few other like sandbox games 
what feature from those games, like cities, like for you, City Skylands, Skylines, what feature from other sandbox games that you want to be in Jurassic World Evolution? So for me, from City Skylines, is that City Skylines actually comes with its own sort of modding, mod making software inbuilt. So you have mm. the map editor, the asset editor, and content editor inbuilt into the game. So it allows you to create your own buildings, and then you can post those buildings to the Steam Workshop um, immediately. And it's it's not very difficult to to do. Um, and obviously there are the map editor as well. The map editor is tricky. But because you can import height maps to it, so you can actually go to a real world, you can take a real world photograph, turn it into a height map, and then wow. um, City Skylines will, the software will turn that height map into um, the map, the game map terrain. So you can have, this is how you've ended up with so many real world locations being done as City Skylines maps and they look real because they're based on the real the real height mapping mm. um, and that sort of freedom to to just put that modding software into the game that's something that a lot of games actually don't do anymore I remember when I was a kid um, Command & Conquer Red Alert, through Red Alert 1 had uh, the map editor with the uh, inbuilt into the game um, <clears throat> I'm actually trying to think of other games um, I've I've ex I've seen it. In. I know there's there's probably quite a few others. Like um, one of my favourite FPS games, actually, Time Splitters. The Time Splitter games available on PS2 had inbuilt t uh, map editors as well, so you could make your own maps. Um, and yeah. What it seems to be, I mean, Far Cry Two had it as well. I'm pretty sure. It seems to be something that game companies are doing less and less. Is this um, giving you tools with the game so that you can kind of expand your gameplay, like the addition of of map editors or the addition of uh, content editors. And I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure why that so many game companies are kind of against people like us having that level of control. Mm. I think it it comes across kind of anti-consumer because people who really love the game, if if you have a fan base that really enjoys your game. But then you turn around and go, oh, well, we don't want to give you tools to, you know, m expand your creativity on our game because we don't, we just don't want to. Then people are just going to turn around and go somewhere else eventually because your game will only survive for a certain length of time. But games where they release the dev tools and they release the editing tools, things like City Skylines, things like Skyrim, um, those games can last forever. I mean, Skyrim's modding community is still going strong, and the game is is old. <laughs> the game is really old now, but it, the modding community is still going amazingly strong. The same for games like Command and Conquer um, Generals and Fallout 4 and um, City Skylines. Like I said, the modding communities are active and massive. Whereas other games, they've just disappeared into the mists because people have gone and found something better. Yeah. And I think I think that is the inherent problem that JWE1 actually had. And I think if JWE1, I think if, if new species hadn't been a thing, I don't think we would be seeing the sort of... Rita, the the Renaissance. I I I would say J, that JWE one is in its this Renaissance period. Everyone is rediscovering mm. their love for the game because of things like the new species mods and such. And I don't think That's that would have happened without new species. 
Um, and I think if, if modding itself had just not been possible, I think the game would already be dead by now and no one would be bothered. And we'd all be playing something else. We'd all be probably a lot more focused on Prehistoric Kingdom than perhaps we currently are. And for me personally, it's from, I'm going to say from the last time, Planet Zoo. Um, it's not the Control Z because I already said that. A different feature I would have liked in the game is this moving of objects on the X, Y, and Z axes and the rotation of um, objects. So, for example, in this little border here, I'm restricted to only this certain level of height. So what I would love to done is like put it, sink it down more to the ground so that way it has, uh, you know, that way the players can have more creativity of the rock formations and I would say how they would design the products to their liking, not a, not, and they do not have a set hitbox, I would say, a set uh, limit, a limit, that way, um, so that way if you, like, in my Planet Zoo video, you'll see how, um, how far I've expanded into my exhibits, and, like, I would just love the, um, scenery, how they do the scenery is the resizing, re rotation, moving, like, so that way you don't have to, you know, just, eyeball it you would just like hold this hold x and then you can just move it across up and down left and right and maybe even underground and one more feature is the uh pathing now planet zoo pathing oh, just... hmm? sorry i just put my dinosaur in the wrong enclosure <laughs> <laughs> it's all good yeah i've done that once in my uh park buildings in my building series so <laughs> but yeah for me um is this like staircase you can make this little staircase so oop. in planet zoo if you just hold shift and your right mouse button or left mouse and just move your mouse up like this it'll actually create a little elevated platform that will either have a slope or stairs and that for me can create more um i would say unique looking exhibits that way instead of having to use the monorail or viewing galleries you can just have the guests look at the exhibit itself while walking so those are the features I personally would like. Yeah, for sure. Um, the fact that guests can wander around your park and not be able to look inside your enclosures through the fences is just so, so stupid. It's it's the worst decision they made because it means that everywhere you have to build these horrible viewing galleries and these massive points. So do you know the, the thing that... It, ticks me off the most about the viewing the viewing towers, the viewing platforms is that they are they've got a massive glass front and they've got a massive glass back but the viewing range is limited to literally just a narrow cone at the front of the building what? Oh, yeah. that is so frustrating because more or less this should have almost a 360 degree vision it should I mean, if you actually look at the look at the model, it's even got a glass bottom to the floor at the front, which sticks out over the building. So in actual fact, you should even be able to look straight downwards on top of dinosaurs, but they don't allow that, and it, it's just so silly. In Jurassic um, Park Operation Genesis, the um, the the viewing the the viewing tower they also called it a viewing platform it was like a it was a two by two size structure because uh, everything was based on a grid in J, jpog and um the tower had 360 degrees vision from four different mm. viewing spots north east south west so you could put it in the middle of lots of enclosures and everyone would be able to see everything and you could use it like as a center point in your park to look over other enclosures yeah. and it, it was it just works better i don't know what to progress on here more i think i just need to put these guys in i think i'll add more exhibits i think i've done the path thing for now it's uh, i think i've had the extreme path guy now i'm the extreme path guy right here Oof, the designs all right Putting in some of my much loved Hoangasaurus. Um, so I haven't got them yet. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't lie, like, I think I've got Hoangasaurus in every single sample. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I might actually, I might incubate Giganotto Swords right now because that was actually next on my list here. Or was it? Oh, no, it was not. It was just a, it was a surprise one that I put in. It's a surprise dinosaur. Well, another card, another carnival myself. Um, I think I'm tempted. I'm ten See, so with the, I think it's worth mentioning that both me and Zyfy have expanded islands mod. So we actually could. If um, if I actually show you where the our map or at least my map boundary is, you can just see how much more of the map we actually uh, can construct here. And um, there's this little weird. Obviously, this this is where the monorail usually um, comes into the map from, and then it goes along this ridge, and you get your your entrance around here somewhere. So you'd never usually be allowed to build here, but you can build here now. But it's it's very dark, so I think I can turn this into like a a mock river or waterfall and maybe have some I don't know maybe have a hybrid in there or maybe have Pristid Champus in there because I have just just got the Pristid Champus um, modded in I think that's yep my two my two Wintona Titans are finally uh, in the correct enclosure this is the um, one of the few dinosaurs as well that comes from Australia so um, it's an Australian sauropod so um, if you want to do your sort of round the world park, you kind of need one Tonna Titan as a, a dinosaur from Australia. I think um, yes. your Rapapator. There. Oh, wait, I, I can never say it. The Rapator. The Rapator comes from Australia, doesn't it? Actually, yeah, it does. Um, I did, when I was coding it uh, for the new species, it's actually in the um, coastlines, close to the coastline, I think, of Queensland. So you could also uh, you make use of Zyfy's uh, Rapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapapap
Like, oh, I know. Let's. I have a difficult name to pronounce. Let's name a dinosaur that's difficult to pronounce as well, so that way people can hate it. I think we'll go with... I rarely use... So I've got the same um, advanced fence mod that uh, Xi-Fi has, which, which has these... Um, is it by Mr. Trodon, did you say? The fences, yeah. Yeah. So they add lots of different types of fencing. One of these is, is a completely opaque, non-see-through heavy steel fence. I rarely oh, use yeah. I rarely use it, but I do use it sometimes when doing safari and gyrosphere enclosures because you can kind of create the the this separated off area which no one else will see apart from you in the gyrospheres. And it just adds a, a little bit more sort of showing off factor to the, the gyrosphere exhibit. Yeah. No, no that's what is nice about it. Um, honestly, I think the modders have made Jurassic World Evolution the Jurassic World Evolution we deserve. Um, it's cer the, uh... it's certainly a lot closer to it. That's that's for sure. Yeah, and I think like one of the modders, like who made these uh, expanded paths, pylons, and fences mod. I think they're working on a mod that adds islands to the game. Um, it's been teased already. I'll that can like. Oh, it's such a good, like, when we first saw it in the modding Discord, we were like, <gasps> and everyone was just shocked. It was like, finally, new islands. <laughs> so, it was you good know to see what it. We, we do absolutely need for, if, if modders want to figure out anything to do with Jurassic World Evolution 1. Yeah. Park bridges. Oh! <laughs> find a way, even if like the bridge itself was a preformed structure which you had to put down a hoover or water source, if someone could find a way to make bridges work, that yes. would have so much possibility. I know, like, especially like since you have to create fake bridges nowadays, ooh, like yeah. the and They never, they always look really, like, really, don't they? Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> There's only so much you can do with the, the tools we uh we have. They're not flat. Okay. Oh, I so we'll move these gigas into the exhibit. Oof. And I think we'll incubate the paras and we're already coming in or close closing in on our two hour mark. Already. I know, this this is quite an extraordinary. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yes, um, I forgot to implement this. It's a it's a dodo mod that adds a dodo. Oh to god, the game. Mm, yeah, dodo is not one species I'm that bothered about having. <laughs> I like dodos. They're one of my favorite extinct birds. <sighs> They're so unique and um, from a game I used to play, I think it was called Blockheads. They had these little dodos, and oh, it was so much nostalgia with these guys. That. Oh, I just can't live without them. I wouldn't make, I wouldn't mind a, a Forosaurus, which is the terror bird that lived at the same time as um, oh, yeah. uh, at the same yeah, time as the um, saber tooth tigers, um, or saber tooth cats, I should say, because saber tooth tiger is a is a mistake. Um, but yeah, like the Forosaurus is. Literally, what named Terra Birds for us rockets, and um, it's just a really nice looking bird. And I reckon you could, because it was like it was kind of um, similar to a secretary bird. It was quite slender, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to things like Gastornis, which are actually quite bulky Terra Birds. So you could probably turn the like Struthiomimus rig or the Archaeornithomimus rig into the Forest Rarkus relatively easily. Yeah, because like, the thing is with modders, we can't use the main content zero, which has all the mods, because A, it's a big OVL, and hashing and renaming it itself, which what creates new species, it's going to take a while, so... Oh, uh, well, the Archaeornithomimus is, is part of the film, is part of the um, deluxe content pack, isn't it? So... But um, the thing is, it's merged in with Content Zero, which oh, is, is dumb. Oh. So sadly, we did. I think we used Dryosaurus for that because a they have to be very similar in rig, and I think only Dryosaurus is the one quite similar to Archies and stuff like that. So that's why we've got so many copies of Herrerasaurus, I suppose, because it's the easiest. It's it's one of the few 
carni small carnivore rigs in the DLC packs. Yeah. Ah, and that explains it. Yeah, it's honestly like, it's pretty funny. Like, I think there's 15 Herrera based dinosaurs plus more. Like, oh, it's crazy. 15 plus. And yeah. I think most of my mods are Herreras. <laughs> Make but... this a desert style enclosure for the gyrospheres and for whatever dinosaur we choose to put in. Maybe Pristichampus, maybe. Ooh, I have the Pristichampus as well. <laughs> for that next all right let's release these dodos more, more. need four dodo birds ah oh, i forgot the new species have bracky icons which in my opinion is annoying i don't know how it became because like if you notice in map view for acrocanthosaurus herrerasaurus they have their unique icons so i don't know how we came to the bracky thing it's really confusing me it's um it is a weird oddity amongst all the new species is that they they show up as brachies, um, brachies, mm. or sometimes as, as the pteranodons. Yeah, and actually, when we first saw the pteranodon icon with the pteranotitan, everyone was like questioning it, like, what was Frontier planning to do with it? Because it's in the game, yes, but what were they gonna do with it? That if you think about that's it, that's actually a good point because. Um... You don't need it in the uh, the avi the aviary is a building in itself, so you wouldn't need it for that, would you? So that's actually a good question. Like, why why have a terra pteranodon rig um, pteranodon um, logo if you if you weren't going to make use of it? Maybe um, that's... maybe there was a sort of pre-design stage where they were testing the Terranodon out, and they had to give it an icon in order to get it in-game on the map. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine that perhaps the game would crash if you have a dinosaur which has no icon whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like, for us, when us modders, like, we have replacing icons, but maybe, maybe, yeah. But if we have no icons, then... It just ha shows up as invisible, and that's the annoying bit for us modders. Mm. Especially in Planet Zoo, which is weird because Planet Zoo is one of the hardest games, I'm gonna say it, one of the hardest games I've tried to mod. And that's saying something, like, from your argument earlier about, like, JWE being quite impossible to mod. For new species on Planet Zoo, there's this giant FDB, FDB which is like a table which defines the animal like what it is how it's how big it is oh i think that i, I think itself... i saw that the other day someone was was asking for help in like what all the values on it mean that, those ones and oh it's so it gets my computer laggy that one time and it was such a pain i was about to finish this fdb then my computer blue screened <laughs> it blue screened then i was like oh that's fine it'll probably auto save i check back I go, I pick up where I, I pick up where I left off, and everything's been resetted. Oh. And I just sat in the corner and cried for out. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why did I decide mm -hmm. to do this again? <laughs> why did I decide to 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 to, to be a modder? It's like you get you get ab so you get absolutely no respect from the modding community because you get people who com constantly yes. complain about absolutely every aspect of what you've made or and like we have a little nickname for those guys the nexus plebs <laughs> the nexus plebs don't be a nexus pleb folks <laughs> yes come on and you will be a hated part of the community um... and person I think I would have become a Nexus pleb if I didn't become a uh, if I didn't become a modder. I would have definitely turned into a Nexus pleb. Good idea, actually. Um, all right, my Pristachampus are going in, and then I think what we should do is once the Pristachampus are in, like if we um, kind of like spend a few minutes like giving a rough tour of the park. Yeah, that should be good. And then we I'll can be with that. we can edit the. Um, those sections, oh, like, I can edit your your v tour of your park into my video, and you can do the same with mine. And then uh, we can ask the folks in the comment section 
which they think is the best. Yeah, and this was not much of a competition, but more of how we execute stuff. I've just realised my Hellwingasaurus are not in their pack. Ah, uh, hold on. Okay, so, so from here, um, hopefully I'll edit this in, but this here we have the new Diamantinosaurus. So, um, honestly, I think it's better than the old one because here we use Camarasaurus as a base, and it's definitely not looking like the old Apato version. It has these spike ridges along the back and this blue, more unique looking crest. So I'll probably take some screenshots to send to you, Fletcher, if you want to see it. Because hopefully it's also fixed because if it's not, then it's sad. But it's just glorious. More diamantine in me. Alright. And then we'll incubate... The Longosaurus are on their way, and the Bristy Champ is almost done. And something, I mean, I know we've been, we've probably been throughout this whole period quite negative about Jurassic World Evolution as a whole. One thing I would yes. say is that Jurassic World Evolution is a really good time sink. You can spend hours just very easily making nice looking, really cool parks. Um, it's very easy to get into. Something, if I had to criticize um, Planet uh, Prehistoric Kingdom at all, is that it's very difficult to get into. And if you are thinking of buying it, be aware that like you're going to be spending 10, 12 hours of gameplay and you will be literally just building a single building in that time. You, you will be not even have dinosaurs in <laughs> if if you're if you're looking to create some amazing structure or or something like that you're going to be spending hours and hours building yeah i think planet zoo is very similar to that and that's what i'm planning to do for my planet sci-fi series um that's like little uh how would i say it? that little more buildings than zoos because that's what i've seen my mistakes in my parks here in JWV, there's there's not much negative space between the exhibits, so I'll be fixing that up a lot. Yes, and, that yeah. that sort of relates back to what we were saying with um, what Evo said, wasn't it? That uh, don't be scared yeah. to waste space. Yes, and the good thing about Planet Zoo is they provide different types of biomes for you. Like there's a grassland, desert, temperate, tropical. You'll see that in the video, um, that's coming really soon, and just need to record the voiceover for it, then I can publish it. Which will be, actually, you might record the voiceover tomorrow, um, two videos in one day. Yeah, I, sh I, yeah. Shall pro I shall probably be recording the voiceover to, uh, the first part of my Jurassic World Evolution review, actually, probably tomorrow as well. <laughs> I was gonna do it today, oh, yeah. but I, um, I didn't wake up with enough time to, to do it before we were getting started on this, and... The... The house is going to get busy um, soon, so I won't have time to do it. Uh, yeah. I'm just sticking the new dinosaurs in, and then we, we will do our quick little tours. Um, so just gonna and then we will shoot end. these guys. Right, shoot them. Shoot ha! So yeah. Shoot her. Every solution for uh, for a loose dinosaur. Robert Muldoon. Poor old Robert Muldoon. They should all be destroyed! <laughs> it's like the very first line he has in the film. They should all be destroyed! Okay then. And I think Robin Mold Robert Muldoon, the actor, was Australian. Because his, like, con in the uh, raptor scene, it was very Aussie-like. Because I have had no experience with Aussies, and they have a aw. Aw, like that. So yeah. Maybe. We'll see. And... Whew. For my starter part enclosures, I like doing redwood forests just because the trees are tall enough for them, or technically for them to eat in. So for me, it will make sense. And that's another redwood forest. Yeah. I, I like re making redwood biomes themselves are really nice. Yes. Uh, and I, I, this is a nice place to plug that in the future. Um, I will also be probably be doing next week a uh, biome video, making your own biomes and sort of doing it. How you can make some realistic looking biomes for your dinosaurs.
Yes, I will leave that a lot. I've, uh, Redwood Forest will be one of them. Um, swamps and that sort of thing. And we'll also, that'll also be good for vanilla players. So I think vanilla players are definitely suffering at the moment with a lack of modding mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. So, um, by making your own biomes is a really good way of, um, sort of getting some extra creativity yeah. out of the limited tools that we have. Mm, that's like that's why I personally like as well. Oof, biomes. That's what makes your park interesting. And what's a good challenge that I'll have for maybe I don't know. Sometimes I do is uh for one park have a set biome like either all desert, all redwood forest, all tropical, all grassland, and have dinosaurs specific to that type of exhibits. So that's just honestly like how you would execute it. I do have a park that I only did redwood with, red wood trees with, and oh, pardon me. Um, so yeah, that honestly, the way it turned out, it was sort of vibes. I would say it was sort of vibes. I would just that's it. The way they gave me sort of vibes. So just it's a good way to challenge yourself. I've, I've, I don't know. It's perhaps not my most decorative park, but yeah, I like it. I'm here. And I think this is actually my most beautiful park because with my other parks, such as my park building series, I put a lot of enclosures nearby. So I might fix that up in the next video. Oh, we'll start. So um, here's a quick tour around. So we have our entrance here on this high ridge uh, with a few base structures and a viewing gallery that looks out into this um, first uh enclosure down here where we have uh, some uh, monkey puzzle scrub forest with for the chasmosaurs and then we've got this old-fashioned I think these are like supposed to be Triassic era trees um, we've got Hesper Hesperosaurus down here and we've got the um, Struthiomimus as well we've got this nice rock feature in the middle and then uh, we have this uh, nice little desert style enclosure for the Allosaurus there, two, two Allosaurus, a mating pair, um, let's say. Um, and then uh, down this way we have uh, just a little bit of a, another guest area with restaurants and guest shops and we've got a, a viewing gallery that looks into this very small um, sauropod enclosure for the Wind Tonner Titans, they're both hiding, I know there's one, the, the Wind Tonner Titans there. Um, and then over this way we have our hotel which is located in the middle of this uh, exhibit um, this this pathway is actually the one I was talking about earlier that uh, I modded in which with the nice uh, blood red and silver um, additions and we just have Hwangosaurus in this little enclosure and I think I would probably put a couple of Ankylosaurs and something like that as well in there and um, over here in the unfinished part we just have the bar uh, in the middle of some acacia scrub and we have this gyrosphere exhibit which uh, goes through these uh, rock archways into this desert enclosure which is home to Pristichampus which is actually um, Pristichampus is a post Mesozoic era animal it's uh, an animal that dates from the Eocene which is where a lot of the massive prehistoric mammals and such come from so this is actually a, a post dinosaur um, reptile and it's actually an example of the I was reading about the fossils of this it's an example of a, of, um, of the a animal trying to repeat the dinosaurs it's it's evolutionary it's closer to dinosaurs than it is to crocodiles and stuff so it's almost an example of a of the dinosaurs trying to come back during the after the extinction and stuff so um yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, so that's that's how I've gotten on with my park so far. Um, and what I'll do after after we film this actually is we'll uh, we'll share screens with each other so we can both see what each other have done off screen. I think that'll be really cool. Um, but go ahead, uh, Zyfy. Let's see what you or well, let's let's show off your park. Oh, so here for my little exhibit. So for my first exhibit, we have this Dimetrodon habitat. Oh, China. This Dimetrodon habitat. Oh, we're just going to hear that. This is Dimetrodon habitat with the walking with monsters, and here we have the 
just this little like forest tree I would say this thick forest tree in the back to hide the fence and then here just like basically hiding the fence was a good idea and the reason like this little pile of pebbles pebbles I'm not thinking of them as pebbles I'm thinking of them as big piles of you know what <laughs> just just creativity <laughs> I did just uh, I just got what you were referring to. <laughs> uh, and then once you enter through the helipad, you actually are open up with this this little like I would say um shopping mall area where you have these majority buildings, restaurant, fast food, toy shop, arcade, and clothes shops. And as you head closer to these two hotels, I got I have both. Jurassic Park and Jurassic World era just to mix it up a bit as if the Jurassic World era is for VIPs only because if we go into here What you see from the Jurassic World is the Maropinosaurus and Diamantinosaurus as if it's For no for those big sauropods these big ticket stars these rich people such as Mr. Majrani who wants to show their own dinosaurs just as a little Thank you for spending money with us. You will now be scammed with these beautiful storopods. pods. <laughs> and this little path art, I will actually like to go up a bit. Um, I went for this, uh, let me go up like, uh, there. So here I have my little, I I'm always putting these in my parks now, this little ZYFI, ZYFI, you know, just a little um, to know that it's my park and that uh, Zyfi built it, not Miss, not the John Hammond or anyone else. And by the hotels, we actually have the Stegosaurus and Triceratops. Now, the reason I chose this combination was because Triceratops and Stegosaurus were my favorite dinosaurs as a kid and make up one of my favorite um, hybrids in the game, the Stegoceratops. Actually, a lot of people seem to hate it. Like the like, yeah, it's just it's just the way um. I don't know. I just like it because it's just good. It's just the design itself. Uh, even though the long horns was bad, everything else was good. And then here was a mistake. This enclosure right here, it was a giant mistake. I put dodos in here, but they're so small that this exhibit makes it seem as if they're in a planet themselves from their view. I was going to go with paras, but I wasn't thinking straight. I was just thinking of these cute little dodos but that was, we have the dodo exhibit and i think that's pretty much it oh wait we have the giganotosaurus which is also vip restricted only because these gigas they have are in a quite hmm, they're invisible they're green they're brown which is a mod i installed there we go and they're by the fence which is actually kind of weird well it's sort of see-through, but not see-through, see see-through. It's those Jurassic Park 3 fences that I really like. It's just, for me, I use these fences for more of, I would say, big boy dinosaurs, such as Spino or Gigas. And it's just a nice aesthetic. So that's pretty much my park, I would say. A lot of, few, only a few exhibits than what I would usually build, but just a giant map, like a giant art path. So that's that's it, I would say. And, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I think um, it has come time here to end our little challenge and leave it up to you guys. So, um, in the comments below, what do you think of both of our designs? Is there one that you prefer over the other? Um, we will both make sure that these, uh, these videos are on our channels with all the relevant descriptions and links and stuff like that. Um, so, um, I'd like to thank everyone for watching in uh, on the Triclaw side. Thank you for watching in. And um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you've come from Xi-Fi's channel. Um, and uh, don't forget to also like and comment and subscribe on Xi-Fi's, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, see you all in the next video, folks. Goodbye. Yeah.